Do you find yourself struggling to balance your mixes without them sounding muddy or mushy? Do you spend hours and hours EQing the living hell out of your tracks trying to get them to sit together until they sound nothing like they used to? You might be suffering from a bad case of frequency masking. Hey, it's Marcus from Hello Sweet. In this video, I'm going to cover what frequency masking is and some simple techniques on how to avoid it. Before we jump in, if you haven't already, might I briefly direct you to the links in the description of this video? There's an ever-growing page of free resources, all designed to help ambient and experimental artists to get the best out of their music. There's also a link to request a free master sample from me. All right, so what is frequency masking? So let's start by looking at the frequency spectrum. It's the range of tones that the human ear can hear, starting at roughly 20 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. If you open up a frequency analyzer on any piece of audio, you'll be able to see what frequencies that audio is made up of and to what amounts. So if we look at this example here, we can see that all of the frequencies are represented in this audio file with 500 hertz peaking at about negative 30 dB from full scale, whereas 16,000 hertz at that specific frequency, we're looking at more like negative 60 dB. Okay, so how does this relate to the parts in our song? Well, each part of our song is going to occupy at least some of the frequency range with some overlap. The problem is if there is too much overlap between two or more instruments, you end up with what's called masking. Masking is where one instrument covers up another one at some frequencies because they share those same frequencies. Usually the louder one will cover up the quieter one. This is because our brain just doesn't have the bandwidth to hear two things at the same frequency at the same time. The result is that the two tracks will sound muddy and indistinct. Fixing masking can be a huge pain, particularly for instruments with a lot of overlap. It generally requires some really aggressive EQ to remove the overlapping frequencies from each part until they can have their own space in the mix. And it'll often change the tone of these instruments in a way that makes them sound a lot different to what they were originally. You can see masking pretty easily if you have a copy of FabFilter Pro Q3. If you load up an instance on each one of your tracks, you can expand the analyzer section to see the frequencies of all the instruments at once. The red indicates where there is frequency overlap between the other tracks and the one that you're looking at. The more red you see, the higher the chance that there's going to be frequency masking happening. All right, so how do we avoid masking? The easiest way is to plan out where everything is going to fit in the frequency spectrum. There is a super simple way to do this, which is to make sure that the fundamental note that's playing for each of the instruments at any time is different. Take a look at this chart. As you can see, all the notes in the classic American scale correspond to frequencies in the spectrum. Every time you hit a middle C, it should appear as 262 hertz or thereabouts, depending on your tuning. So if you hit that note at middle C, that is the fundamental note. If you look at the frequency, you will see that there are other frequencies present, which are the harmonics, but they're much quieter. So the main note that we're looking at is that fundamental note that middle C. So to avoid masking, we have to make sure that the other instruments don't have any energy at around 262 hertz at the same time. The easiest way to do that, play an octave up or an octave down. C1 octave above is 523 hertz and C1 octave down is 130 hertz, which gives all these instruments heaps of room to breathe. And of course, you can write parts that are closer together than one octave, but just be aware that the closer they get, the harder it will be to EQ them together in the mix. Another way to help avoid masking is to use instruments of different timbre. For example, if you have two synthesizers that are playing notes that are quite close to each other, having the filter further open on one means it'll be easier to hear because there'll be less competition at those higher frequencies. Or if you wanna have two instruments playing the same notes at the same time at any point, try using instruments that sound very different from each other. So for example, a digital synth and an analog one or a guitar and a synth. Each of these instruments will have their own frequency profiles so you can enhance other areas aside from the fundamental note to make sure that they're heard properly. And as always, reverb is a huge contributing factor to masking because it's playing the same notes that it's being fed from the instruments. I generally cut around the fundamental note in the reverb to reduce the chances of masking. Check out this video for how I EQ reverb. And don't worry, once you've done this a few times, it'll become second nature. You won't have to plan it out. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end. For those still watching, I have a question for you. What instruments do you make music with? Let me know your gear list in the comments. If you like this video and you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and hit that button. Thank you so much for the support. Don't forget to check the links in the description for all the free stuff. And over here, you should find some more videos that I've made on producing, mixing, mastering, and releasing ambient and experimental music. Until next time, keep making music. Cheers.